Chapter 1. Doing the same things over and over again only produces the same old results. Try a new approach for a change. In 2015, El Faro, a ship with a crew of 33 mariners, sank. Before the ship set sail, meteorologists already predicted a hurricane, but the captain decided to take a direct route that also turned out to be the most exposed route to the hurricane. This decision was made without a discussion with his team. Technical competence was not a problem in this case, as the captain had been a master for 10 years, and the officers and crew members had met all the Coast Guard and International Maritime Organization requirements and regulations. The problem was that they were operating based on an outdated leadership playbook, and this led to a lot of mistakes that began with yielding to the time pressure. Sometimes you can't control the laid-down rules, but you can change how you speak to your team members and the words you use. Leadership is a language that is hidden in communication. As captain of the nuclear-powered submarine USS Santa Fe, David Marquette had to learn a new leadership style to lead his team if he wanted a successful tenure. In a bid to find a working system, he discovered that doing and thinking are the basic building blocks of all human activity. A correct balance of both helps us achieve our goals. While doing is physical interaction with the world, thinking is the deliberate exploration of information, beliefs, stories, and assumptions to interpret the world around us. So, what proportion of thinking and doing is necessary for a successful project? Keep reading to find out this and more. Chapter 2 Every team member's opinion is relevant to a project. A variety of suggestions makes it easier to solve a problem. Many times we continue with a plan even when it doesn't look like it's going to yield a desirable result. This is called obeying the clock. Although we feel pressured to get our work done in the allotted time, it also creates focus and makes us perform better. The more you talk, the less you're listening. If you want to hear more, talk less first, then they talk more. David Marquette we tend to focus on what others should do rather than doing the hard work of changing our behavior. So instead of listening more to your team, you tell them to speak up more. This method of pushing action on others makes it easier to blame them when things go wrong. But leadership is about taking responsibilities for how our actions and words affect the lives of others. A recording of the conversations that took place aboard El Faro showed that the captain's use of hesitant, ineffective, and ambiguous language escalated panic and confusion on the ship. In the 511-page transcript of the conversations that took place on the ship, the captain made 1,203 statements and asked 165 questions over a 25-hour period, but these questions didn't ask for others' opinions. For instance, we're going into the storm. I wouldn't have it any other way. Or, does that make sense? Are not statements that encourage people to give their honest opinions. Instead, they gave a false sense of comfort and prompted people to continue doing their work. It doesn't have to be this way. It is possible to create a safe environment for every team member to express their views. For instance, a display of vulnerability by the captain would have encouraged other crew members to contribute and make a better decision. Workplaces are not emotion-free zones, and it is up to you as a leader to care about the emotional health of the workers. But with our programmed way of conforming to situations, we avoid making connections. When everyone is involved in decision-making, it's a win-win situation. The organization becomes more profitable and employees feel more fulfilled. An excellent way to ensure that everyone is involved in decision-making is to track the proportion of words each person contributes to a conversation. On board El Faro, a lot of top officials were engaged in decision-making and this left the junior team members with no opportunity to contribute.
Chapter 3. Thinking and acting are not mutually exclusive. Practical action is preceded by careful thinking. Sometimes, people tend to take more credit for a task's outcome than they deserve. This phenomenon is called overclaiming and dates back to the 1970s. Overclaiming happens because our efforts are more visible to us. Many group decisions are made by a quick vote of agreement, and this turns out to be convergent most of the time. For better results, diverge first, allow each member to make their guess before being influenced by the group, and most importantly, the boss. This allows an unbiased look at what each team member is bringing to the table. An easy way to do this is to ask each person to write down an estimate before any discussion occurs, then review everything together as a group. This results in the wisdom of the crowd instead of the person with the loudest voice or most significant pull. Doing is important, but action must be balanced with thinking, David Marquette. Thinking benefits from embracing variability. Doing benefits from reducing variability. When it comes to ideas, you need to explore a wide range. When everyone thinks in the same direction, it reduces variability. Everyone does not have to agree on a decision because the more differently people think, the better they can come up with solutions. Decision-making and execution require two different mental processes and two different kinds of language. Decision-making and thinking are called blue work, while execution is called red work. To be effective, we need to weave back between thinking and doing, but the problem comes when we only do things without thinking. To remedy this, we need to shift from red work to blue work more often. For instance, instead of asking, are you sure? You can ask, how sure are you? This calls for more reflection and a more thoughtful answer. Blue work is the cognitive work of making decisions and yields a variety of results. The inability of the crew of El Faro to adapt their plan to a changing weather situation is one of the effects of not having a system that operates using blue work. When everyone is involved in thinking, we get a win-win situation. The company becomes more profitable and people become more content at work. Red-blue approaches such as Total Quality Leadership, TQL, and Crew Source Management, CSM, which try to involve the workers in developing solutions by both thinking and doing, are necessary for every organization. It emphasizes the need for communication among team members. There is an optimal balance for every business, but finding it takes skill and experience. Did you know? The human brain uses 20 to 25% of your daily calorie intake. Chapter 4. As a leader, you should show your team members that a mistake is not a death sentence but a necessary part of learning. The fact that people are scared of making mistakes at work goes to show just how much of a negative thing they consider a mistake to be. Mistakes can result in discoveries and alternate routes. Ideas do not have to be perfect on the first try. There's always room for change whenever a technique seems not to be working. Leaders have the responsibility of creating a culture that accepts and invites pauses from the team and of providing the team with the mechanism to call a pause, David Marquette. Many organizations encourage people to speak up and do this by investing in classes, lectures, and posters guaranteed to boost self-confidence. But all these do not address the real issue. Barriers at work need to be removed to encourage free communication. As a leader, you can do this by controlling the clock and giving your team the tools to do this as well. Agile management is a useful tool for this purpose. It structures teamwork in sprints. These sprints are usually two weeks long, but could be longer or shorter. There are four ways to do this. Make a pause possible when no products are being made. In many organizations where people get promoted for being go-getters, 
It is hard to take pauses, but a pause is necessary if you want to be better equipped for future mistakes. Give the pause a name instead of assuming your team knows the name. Pre-plan phrases or signals that the team can use to create an operational pause. This is made perfect with more practice. Call a pause when you see something unexpected. Your team members may not be able to effectively do this because they may be so lost in work or feel a lot of pressure. It is also necessary that you plan for the next pause instead of relying on someone else to signal a pause. Proper planning safeguards the team against the tendency to get carried away by the activities of a task while losing focus on another. Your ability to control your activities rather than obeying the clock and doing whatever pops up will save you a lot of time and energy. Chapter 5. Good leaders do not impose their ideas on their team members. They allow them to come up with original ideas. When leaders attempt to collaborate with their teams to make decisions, they often end up skipping the divergent part that examines what others think and jump to what they believe. Bosses try to be compelling without a care for their team's contributions, and in meetings they push for consensus. This is all in a bid to coerce their team to follow the decisions they already made. Coercion means to use influence, power, and rank to bring people around to your way of thinking. There are four ways to collaborate with your team. Firstly, vote, then discuss the problem. This exposes the greatest variability of thinking. You can do this by conducting an anonymous blind electronic polling, asking probability questions instead of yes-no ones. Secondly, be curious enough to discover what people see differently when they disagree with you. You could break up a meeting into smaller groups and have them swap ideas. Next, don't try to drive consensus. Instead, drive dissent. Dissent doesn't equal disharmony. Rather, it creates a sense of excitement and energy. Scan those who remain quiet and encourage them through your questions to share their views. Finally, instead of issuing orders, provide information on the consequences of a particular behavior. This helps them understand the importance of a specific behavior. Collaboration not only provides a better sense of reality, but it also helps to make better decisions. Consider every phase an experiment as this helps you learn and improve. Through brainstorming, a hypothesis is established and by doing, it is tested. Being curious about what other people think is the foundation of asking good questions. Yes, bad questions exist. When you ask one question in different ways or ask a leading question that suggests the other person is wrong or even a why question, it is a bad question. The same thing applies for yes-no questions and self-affirming questions that seek to prove what you want a case to be. Good questions not only result in good answers, but they also help you to get to know your team better. Embrace the outliers and those who are in support of a decision that is not the majority. This invites the group to think in another direction. Chapter 6 after a brainstorming session, it is essential that everyone commits to seeing the project through. Commitment is an intrinsic motivator that is more powerful than compliance because it invites full participation, engagement, and discretionary effort. When you commit to an action, you choose to dedicate time and energy toward that particular objective. Businesses have a lot of things that require employees to commit, but they must have a choice first. If a person has no choice but to say yes, then that is compliance. Although when it comes to standards like safety, it is important to push compliance forward. Commitment usually works when you need your team members to work at a particular goal. Individuals make commitments. Groups do not. Commitment is personal. It comes from within. David Marquette. 
Compliance may work for simple, practical, repetitive, individual tasks, but it doesn't work for complex, cognitive, custom team tasks. To move from compliance to commitment in your organization, these steps are necessary. Commit to learning, not just doing. Humans like to explore and learn new things. An employee that is committed to learning does not need to prove anything, but instead seeks to improve. It also prevents an adverse reaction to setbacks. Commit actions, not beliefs. A major mistake is trying to get people to make a sudden mindset change. Instead, commit actions. Allow people who disagree with an idea to hold on to their ideas. As long as they commit to supporting the decision through actions, the goals of the organization are met. Chunk it small, but do it all. Innovations, new product design, and improving manufacturing processes might not reveal the natural processes like an operational definition would. Committing to shorter periods of work makes learning faster and more fun. Breaking up work into a series of small pieces tends to reinforce the goals of an organization. A commitment statement contains a resolve to do the work and a plan to shift back to the drawing board after some time. Although workers may be willing to commit, they may be burdened with ego threat, the idea that others will view them as incompetent. This prevents them from making prompt decisions or even showing commitment. Junior team members build their self-esteem when you encourage them to discuss their ideas and state the rationale behind them. Chapter 7. At the end of every task, it is important that you celebrate its completion. Completion marks the end of a period of red work. We are programmed to continue working, continue on to the next task. It is an endless cycle of work with no sense of completion, but we need to complete projects because failure to treat completion as a deliberate step in the process means an inability to see the work in its different elements. This increases commitment because we see longer production cycles. This makes it hard for changes to be made. Customers change, technology changes, even the weather changes. Long continuation cycles make it difficult to adapt to these changes. Making decisions while in continuation mode means that when you reach a fork in the road, you do not recognize it as a fork in the road. Instead, it seems like a straight road with an exit. David Marquette Secondly, when tasks are not completed, there are no celebratory moments in the organization. This can take a toll on the employee's morale and attitude towards work. Completing a job helps to proactively control the clock and move on to another task with a feeling of accomplishment. Today's rapidly changing world proves that emphasis has shifted from production to learning. There are four ways to effectively move from continuation to completion when working on a project. They are, in the early stages of a project, ensure that there are longer periods of learning. This means that there should be shorter periods of work. As the project goes on, there can be more time for work and less for learning. Completing a stage of a project calls for a celebration, but a celebration should not be closely followed by criticism. Appreciate instead of evaluate, observe instead of judge, and prize instead of praise. Focus on behavior, not characteristics, because it can have a negative effect on your team. Celebrate things that people can control and not the things they can't. Focus on the journey and not the destination by paying attention to other people's accounts of their work and try to detect turning points in the process. Completion gives a psychological separation from previous activities and allows you ego detachment from those activities. It helps you to focus on the new task at hand and gives the next one a good head start. Appreciation empowers the recipient by stimulating learning and risk-embracing behaviors. It encourages them to put more effort into a new task.
Chapter 8. Everyone can be a better version of themselves if they choose to do the work it requires. Contemplation and self-reflection are key components of learning, creativity, and innovation, but contemplation in itself is not enough. The goal is to keep improving your skills until the desired outcome is reached. The team working on the movie Frozen was able to come up with it because they thought outside the box and sought for an improvement of the original story. To improve, it is essential to relax and take your mind off the pressure of the clock. If you haven't scheduled your activities, you might be worried that your team is not improving, but having control over the clock and planning the completion of your work helps you stay confident through the process. Improvement happens in batches, and even when you get excited about a sudden insight, it is best to be patient until you can calmly discuss it with the team. The mindset that is set on improvement pits the be good self against the get better self. The former wants to protect its reputation by feeling completely effective and credible, but doesn't lead to any innovations. The get better self is interested in growth and learning and is curious about new challenges. To evolve, we need to activate the get better self. Intrinsic motivation to be better comes from within. The self-determination theory explains many behaviors that workers exhibit. The purpose of learning is change and a sense of control is positively correlated to innovation, creativity, and learning, as evidenced in research done by Teresa Amabile. When we have no control over our ability to improve, we learn that any effort to improve is futile. This prevents us from even trying at all. A lot of organizations claim to be all about safety first, but in reality, are more concerned about the hierarchy situation and power play. When an organization strictly enforces the belief that workers are not to ask questions about their work, it creates a layer of doubt and fear. A negative work culture not only prevents employees from sharing their ideas, but it also makes them feel disconnected from the core of the task. A connection with your team makes it safe to say what they think even if no one feels the same way. Every employee should feel safe enough to share their ideas. Chapter 9. Have goals, but be ready to tweak them for a better option if necessary. Between thinking and doing, there are a lot of things that go on. When you feel like you are not making progress, study the pattern and identify your position. You can always begin again when you don't seem to understand a step. Blue work benefits from a wider perspective and embraces vulnerability. Therefore, goal setting can have unintended negative consequences. David Marquette Sometimes it is useful to think in terms of roles, what each role entails, and how it matters to the organization. Creating a learning and adaptive organization requires implementing a red work, blue work operating rhythm at the strategic, operational, and tactical levels. This can be done by setting specific goals, which have been shown by numerous studies to boost performance. Specific goals narrow people's focus on a task, but result in the exclusion of a lot of other information that does not relate to the task at hand. When companies set specific strategy goals, the performance mindset becomes predominant, and without specific mechanisms to allow employees to control the clock, they feel incapable of controlling the outcome of the task. The problem with goals is that the strategies people use to achieve goals are at odds with learning. They impede learning and adaptation, and when a goal is met, it gives people permission to stop working. At this point, it is crucial for teams to have a reasonable degree of self-regulation. Many of the new plays will require you to change the way you ask questions, interact, or make a commitment. When you're open to being helped, you grow faster. Leaders have three domains in which they can influence the system. The first is determining the overall balance between red work and blue work. 
The second domain is getting everyone involved in the thinking processes rather than in leadership only, while the third domain is within the red work periods, setting goals and a focus for the team. The outcome of these domains is learning and can be applied to work, home, or life generally. The habit of deliberate action reduces error and error propagation. It is also helpful when you need to make decisions that greatly affect the organization. Conclusion From the story of El Faro, it is evident now that the fastest route isn't always the safest, and a decision made by the most qualified officer in a room isn't always the smartest. The captain's language of invincibility discouraged any crew member from expressing concern. Perhaps El Faro would have been saved if the captain had established psychological safety that encouraged a diversified opinion from the crew members. Maybe if he had established the practice of voting first before discussing and practiced being curious instead of compelling, the ship would have been safe. Every organization has a particular culture that is groomed through daily interactions and actions. As a leader, it is your responsibility to push for a more beneficial communication system. Your type of leadership is evident in the language you use. Always remember that you control the clock and everyone needs to collaborate to achieve a goal. But this is not possible if they do not commit to working hard at it. It is your job to celebrate wins, pursue every team member's improvement, and connect to them individually. In the real sense, these steps are not easy, but they are worth it and would prevent your ship from sinking. Try this. Discuss your organization's goals with your team. Share your possible concerns and encourage them to share theirs. Also, try to create a platform for employees to make their suggestions anonymously before a decision is made.